right, welcome to ProMix Academy. I'm Glenn Fricker, your resident Reaper guy. And uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at some basic automation moves in Reaper. Now, generally, uh, in my career, I don't do a whole ton of automation. I mean, like just a few minor things here and there. And it usually has to do with either uh, moving the volume faders, uh, pans, or uh, effect sends. And that's about it. I don't do anything hideously complex. It's just how I was kind of brought up as to not do a whole lot of stuff. Try and get it right with the faders to begin with. Now, all automation does is it just moves your faders up and down or your pans or whatnot as the song is playing. So you can program that. So you can turn your volumes up on certain things depending on where you are in the song. Now, this Scourge of the Earth track I've been working on has a lot of automation going on uh, on the snare, and it's kind of a white noise snare thing I've got going on. It kind of it's uh, it's a little blast of white noise to go along with the actual recorded snare drum, just to give it a little bit more zing because there wasn't a bottom snare mic recorded. And we get this. The only problem is it's on on snare rolls. It sounds a little bit weird, so we turn it down. and then back up to normal. Now, if I wanted to automate, say, the main vocal in this song, just turn some lines up and down, what I want to do is I just want to hit the V key, and that's going to give me this blue line here, and it'll allow me to raise and lower certain points. If I do like a little key move like this, it's Shift and Command, I believe, or Option. Um, we're going to have the keyboard commands up in the video. Uh, it just lets me highlight a section and move that up and down. It's pretty cool. Like now, if I want to get, say, matching volume levels for a couple different segments, all I'm doing is selecting at the top of the screen here, the, the region that I want to turn up or down and just grab it like so. And what's great is you get this white line that goes across and you can just match things exactly. And then we can grab this other part and move it down and then move this section up. The only problem is if you don't select make boundaries for this, you're going to run into problems. And even if you do select, you have to do the shift option or you're not going to get the region to move as a whole. The great thing is you can grab these little points and just adjust accordingly as you see fit. You can grab them anywhere you want and move them up, down, whatnot. And your volume is going to go up and down and, and, and follow it. Why am I one who sees and watches every Now to bypass that, there's just a little uh, little uh, switch over here to hit, and that's going to turn that off. And then we've got the volume on the actual track down here, which is controlling it. Now Reaper offers up a whole bunch of different types of automation that I usually don't use. I like to just draw my stuff in manually, and that way get the automation to do exactly what I want at the first time with minimal screwing around. But there are several ways to record what's going on with the automation. Um, what we want to do is we want to head over to, and hit this little button on the fader. Uh, for the vocal here and what we want to do is hit the different types of automation modes now we're going to go to write first and we're going to write in some automation let's uh let's play it on this vocal see what happens Why am I one who sees and Now, if I hit play again, while this is still in record mode, watch what happens. It's going to overwrite all the automation. So if you're entering record mode, make sure you turn it off before you hit playback again. So we're going to take a look at the two different other modes here, which is uh, touch and latch. Now, these are two different ways of doing things as well. Um, th what they're going to do is record a fader movement. One allows you, uh, the first here, I think touch allows you to make an adjustment as long as you're touching the fader, and then it will follow the previously written automation. Let's see what goes on here. We're going to turn this up. Why am I one who sees and watches it? 
And yes, and as soon as you let go of that fader, So touch only works as long as you're touching that fader. As soon as you let go, it's going to go back and follow whatever pre-recorded path you had on that automation. And then latch is the opposite. What it's going to do is it's going to leave the fader exactly where you left it. Why am I one who sees and watches every move? And it's just going to overwrite all the following automation until you make a change. So both have some pretty interesting applications uh, for trimming or fixing stuff however you want. Myself, personally, I really just like making selections <laughs> and turning stuff up and down with the command shift controls and um, you know just, just drawing stuff in manually. I really, really enjoy doing that. Now, uh, you can also control pretty much everything with this as well. Um, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually sh turn this into read mode. So it's just going to leave it alone. This is where it gets interesting is if you have trim slash read, it'll allow you to do offsets. I believe if I move the fader right now, it's not going to change anything. Why am I one who yeah, it's just going to, it's just going to follow that, that fade automation I have put in place and not touch and just leave it alone. Basically, even if I move the fader, it's going right back. Whereas trim read, I use this all the time. And this is what it defaults to. And this is what I use for what you would call an offset. So it's going to maintain all that automation data, but it's going to globally move the fader up and down and still follow. So I'll turn this down a bit. And then this third line should be really quiet. So if I want to just bring that back up. Now, I, I use uh, Trim Read all the time when I'm doing final mixes and whatnot, because that way it'll follow the automation I have in place on a vocal or a lead guitar or something like that. And if I just want to move the track up and down in a global fashion, it'll do that. I use it all the time. It's a fantastic way to work. The great thing about Reaper is you can automate every single fa control, fader, send, pan, whatever um, on this mixer. And you can automate it down to the minutest detail. And one thing I love to do is set up long delays on long stretched out vocal lines and send them to a nice long repeating delay, which I've got set up over here. It's just the, uh, the rear delay. It's a fantastic delay that's built right in with Reaper. I use it all the time. It's great. So what we want to do is we want to go into our automation and make a selection here. And what we want to do is we want to do the send volume and make that visible. And that's going to give us our send line and that's right here this is what's being sent to the, to the long delay over here if we pull that up you can see that's being sent now that's uh not going to give us anything right now then i'm going to want to add a maybe a right to left pan on this little pick scrape over here because it sounds a little boring right down the middle That's kind of cool, but it always, pick scrapes I always find sound cool, cooler if you can get them, you know, in a, just, you know, do an automated pan across you know, the sound field. It's pretty neat. But first and foremost, yeah, let's just, uh, let's just draw in some automation on this little vocal piece here. So we're just going to hit the option button and draw in a little bit of automation for the send there. If I solo this up, you can hear exactly what's going on with the delay. This is kind of neat. Just kind of stretches that out. It's a lot of fun to do that. And then, of course, you can just redraw this or automate it however the heck you want. 
And then you can do your trim, latching, and all the rest of the stuff if you so feel the need. So that's a, that's a very powerful tool right there. So next up, we're going to take a look at this pick scrape on the Andy Leeds track, no less. Okay, I still don't know what Andy is. But this is, again, a testament to why you should always label your tracks over the instrument being played, not who plays them. So we're going to pull up our automation menu here, and we're just going to go to track envelopes, hit pan, and then we get the... We get the automation in place. So what we want to do is make four uh, four automation points here. We're going to hit option and draw two points a little bit further apart. And then we're going to move one up all the way and then down all the way. This should give us the pen we're looking for. And because I did four automation points, it's going to revert right back to pan dead center for the rest of the effects on this track. So that's pretty cool. And then, you know, we can adjust the taste. If we didn't like that, that pan, we can start the at the other side and end a little bit sooner. Let's try that. And if we really want to get crafty, we can add in a couple more automation points and add in basically a double pan. So we'll move it back and forth across the sound field twice, see what we get. It's gonna go pretty quick. It might be really disturbing. Okay, that's pretty cool. Actually, that, that turned out way better than I expected. Um, so there you go, some basic automation moves in Reaper. Like I said, it's a, they're very powerful tools. The trick is to not abuse them. Uh, like I said, you can record all your fader moves if you so choose, but I find it's just a little more accurate to do it manually myself and just draw in the envelopes. Remember, just uh, bring up this, this little button here, track envelopes automation, and you should have controls over pretty much everything from basic track stuff like volume pan with you name it all the way uh to some of the other tracks here that have a lot of effects on them if you bring that up and take a look you get automation controls on basically every single control for all the effects you've got running as well and that can get pretty complicated but that can be great if you're say automating a delay or something like that that can be pretty cool truthfully i don't automate my effects very much it's all just move very simple moves for fades and pans that kind of thing and effect sends but um, if you ever feel the need to go into your different effect settings and tweak them as the mix goes on that's fine i've got the empirical labs arouser here and you get all the different controls right there that's pretty sweet. So there you go. That's Automation and Reaper. If you found it useful, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We'll have a lot more Reaper tips coming your way. And uh, don't forget to check out my downloads, my free ebook about recording metal drums, my cheat sheet, and don't forget to check out some of my premium lessons. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.